Well, after the demonstration by the, the, sorry, the nationwide demonstration by the NDC yesterday, now that's led to the increased and continuous conversation about what has to be done to address the concerns that they raise for the credibility of the electoral roll going into this election also to be to be rest assured and reassured, not just for the NDC, but for the other like-minded persons and groups that joined the demonstration and have spoken so far about it. The Christian Council of Ghana is calling on the Electoral Commission to a broader consultation of stakeholders and ensure transparency in its processes ahead of the 2024 December elections. And as a statement that they issued um, also together with the eminent persons group. They all came together to issue this statement, which we got a copy of earlier today. The Christian Council and the eminent persons group are saying this will cultivate confidence and trust in the commission for the elections. I'm just going to show you portions of this statement that came through earlier today and take a look at this. They say that the electoral commission through her actions and inactions has faced many accusations leading to the loss of confidence and heightened levels of mistrust in the conduct of Ghanaian elections, especially from parties in opposition. And nonetheless, the 2024 polls are being conducted under intensified skepticism, particularly due to concerns raised by the main opposition party, the NDC, regarding the voters register and related issues. They continue, they are calling on the Electoral Commission to elevate her consultations and participatory methods and ensure increased transparency and improved communication with stakeholders. And take a look at that. The, the, the recommendation there is increased transparency and improved communication with stakeholders to cultivate confidence and trust. These are the two crucial ingredients in any electoral process that certainly must be upheld. Now, this is especially significant in this crucial election year. And that's what, how they conclude um, the statement, portions of it that we received earlier today with the Christian Council of Ghana and the eminent persons as well, eminent persons of Ghana will sign this statement. And let's stay a bit further on this. Dr. Togbi Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo is a statesman. He is a founding member of the New Patriotic Party. He's joining us on Zoom for a conversation. Togbi. I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. We saw the demonstration yesterday. The Electoral Commission has also responded. The position is quite clear on this. Beyond the demonstration and what has been happening now, what should be the next step of consideration in addressing the issues that have come up, just in the interest of sustaining the trust and confidence in the electoral process? I think... Uh... Firstly, it's unfortunate that we've got to this uh, position at the moment. And what is happening now to me, it's not a question about the NDC, but it's a national issue, and we have to be very careful. Um, I said so because we've seen something like this before in this country. Um, or it happened in other countries around us. Now, the voters was supposed to be a peaceful one. But what happened in Kumasi is a very, very important statement. The police cannot suppress the masses. I repeat, the police cannot suppress the masses. They might be able to control them to a certain extent. And also, if we are not careful, and this gets into a serious uprising, which is possible, let me warn this nation, which is very possible, And when we are in serious crisis, then we are walking into the hands of the military. And if we walk into the hands of the military, I think the people of this country will regret forever. But it is unfortunate that as I speak now, we have elders in this society, senior statesmen, 
both in my party, the NPP and other political parties, and nobody is saying a word. We have also other respected citizens in this country. They are all quiet. When we get to that deadly level, I think that is the time that they will realize that it was necessary for them to have said something else. Now, I noticed that there were few representatives from other political parties in the protest. That is important. The concerns of all the political parties must be seen to by the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission is not above the laws of this country. They are not. And what really disturbs me is that I listened to a gentleman from my party defending the indefensible. You can see clearly from his statement that the EC has committed an error and they are not willing to correct it. An error with our call was deliberate. And if, if it had not been dictated by the NDC, we would have had a different results after the election. I have said time and again that when a political party will win an election in any civilized country, you see it. And we have to be careful. I once again appeal to Jim Mensah that she should be careful. She should make sure the concerns and demands of these political parties are met by the EC. Well, if she's not careful, she walk this country into destruction. It can happen. Years ago, we thought there could not be a problem in Liberia. I remember vividly when trouble came to Liberia, uh -huh. we all knew how it was. So once uh -huh. again, I would like to appeal to the East because all she has to do is to allow the forensic audit. Simple. Simple. If she prevents to do that, that will convince all thinking Ghanaians that she's hiding something. But, but it appears, uh, Toby, the, the, the ISIS position is quite clear on that call for an audit. They have indicated that the exhibition ex exercise itself was a corrective measure that identified some of these issues. And so that call really is not necessary as against the issues that the NDC has raised. So the position is quite clear. But then again, there's, there's been that talk for dialogue. And that's where this recent call is, is increasing now. And, and I want to find out your thoughts on that, especially because of the positions that we have heard on this matter going forward. No, quite recently, an institution that I have always been thinking they should be the first when we have such crisis coming up are the religious group. Some of them even started talking about what is happening in the country just yesterday. They should be the first. Now, what is happening now, we have to be careful. I keep on saying, I keep on saying that because we don't know how it will end. And the best way to avoid crisis is to prevent crisis from coming. Now, the religious bodies are there. The TUC has come out with a strong statement. Indeed, today, they have added more demand. 
And I don't believe any sane government will sit down unconsidered. The churches, as I said earlier on, trade union, various organizations, and particularly the young people of this country. If they want to lead this country or be around and this country is led into destruction, that is left to them. That is left to them. Because if we joke with what is happening now, what started today, what started today is a serious, very, very serious signal. And I will be surprised if it's not taken seriously by any staying politician, and for that matter, any other person in this society, and the youth in particular. It shouldn't be just a protest. It's a signal. If we are not careful, it will lead us into a situation that will be worse than June 4. I saw June 4. I saw it with my naked eye. So, I think this is all that I And uh, th yeah. those words, as brief as they are, is enough to carry a, a message as you have presented it. And I, and I do appreciate your time. Um, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Talk with Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo. And in fact, today, the NDC in the Ashanti region also issued a statement. And that's what Talk with Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo has been referring to uh, what happened earlier today with respect to the NDC's position on, on, the, on the developments. And we're putting part of the incident on the screen right now um, that characterize some skirmishes in that region yesterday. They say they are denying the police statement that in the, the, the attack, the, the police personnel there, that did not happen. Um, they rather would also in their statement indicate that their supporters rather were manhandled by the Ghana Police Service personnel who were deployed to guard the protesters during that demonstration yesterday. So that's the position put out earlier today uh, by the NDC in the Ashanti region. And it's one that we're keeping an eye on to see how things play out here on your election command center. But there's been a number of references made to the trust and confidence in the Electoral Commission. And this is what we saw. Comparing to at least two data points, so we know. So those of you who would have positions about a particular survey and the outcome of it, now, Here's what we do. If you don't want to trust just one poll, look at two or three of them. Trust in the Electoral Commission and the courts, the Ghana Police Service, plummeted to unprecedented low levels, at least in the Afrobarometer survey uh, that was released sometime last year. It surveyed between the years 1998 all the way to the year 2022. And I'm going to take you through it. Take a look at this. Follow me closely. Now, in the year 1998, according to the Afrobarometer survey, the Electoral Commission enjoyed a trust level of 63%. In the year 2022, it dropped to 2,000, it, it dropped to 49%. In the year 2002, 49%. Now, in 2006, prior to the 2008 elections, when the Afrobarometer survey was conducted, the Electoral Commission enjoyed a trust level of 75%. It then dropped to 67% in the year 2009. And I want you to track the years. Every time after the a major election, for instance, in 2008, you see that, that decline. And, and watch this. In the year 2013, there was another survey. In fact, in 2012, you saw another decline to 59%. Then in 2014, just after the 2012 elections, we saw a further decline to 37%. And between 2014 and 2018, when the other survey was conducted, there was an increase of 54% in the confidence level for the Electoral Commission. Now, between 2018 and to 2020, prior to the 2020 elections, the Electoral Commission enjoyed a confidence level of 52%. Now, in 2022, when the Afrobarometer survey conducted 
it's round nine, they saw a decline as well in the trust in the Electoral Commission dropping to 33%, an all-time low. That was two years ago. Proud to this election as we're going into it. Now, there's going to be another Afrobarometer survey that's going to be released in the coming weeks, so we'll keep an eye on that. But as of 2022, the trust in the Electoral Commission per the Afrobarometer survey was 33%. That's all-time low. Now, that's not the only one. The Global Info Analytics has also been doing some surveys, doing comparative analysis month on month. In the month of April this year, 2024, that's the survey details represented with the green bar. And the month of July, survey details represented with the blue bar. In the month of April, when they went onto the, on, onto the street across the country, surveying almost 8,000 respondents, 59% of the respondents in April said they had confidence in the Electoral Commission. Now, guess what? In July, this was just two months ago, when they went onto the streets again, sampling the same size, they had 53% of the respondents saying that they had confidence in the Electoral Commission. That's a drop. But if you compare that to those in April who said they had no confidence in the Electoral Commission, that was 32%. But then in July, it was an increase to 38%. So you see clearly that comparative analysis in terms of the month for month and how things are playing out for the Commission in terms of the trust and confidence that citizens and electorates have for them. And those who say they have no opinion, about 9% of, of them. Now, when I sat earlier with the UK minister in charge of Africa, Lord Collins, he also had some thoughts about what has to be done to improve the confidence and trust in the Electoral Commission going into this crucial election. Take a look. I think, as I said, I've spoken to uh, the candidates. They're all committed to that process. They've all, you know, uh, everyone wants to be reassured about processes. Um, but I think actually the most important thing is that they uh, speak to each other about the sort of standards that they want uh, to see achieved. And I think that dialogue is really important. So the mechanisms for achieving that through the Electoral Commission, uh, the National Peace Commission, those things, setting standards for democracy to work fairly, are really important but everyone has to have confidence in that and I'm confident that the two candidates and the major political parties will focus on achieving that fair election because whatever the outcome uh, you know Ghana needs to focus in the longer term uh, with a government that has that mandate. And the fairness and transparency is key. Of course it is in any election but I think that can only be that can be best achieved uh, with dialogue between the major parties because, uh, you know, it's, I think they both cherish the democracy that Ghana's been able to uh, establish uh, and embed. And I think that's the important key to the future. The short-term focus of some of the promises you have heard as well, it is, is, is that a challenge to our democracy from where you see it? Well, I think it's a challenge for all democracies. Uh, I don't think Ghana's unique, and I think that's why, you know, I will no doubt meet uh, the President of Ghana at the General Assembly of the United Nations, where the whole agenda is focused on the, that future generation. And also, I mean, the agenda is how do we actually sort of deliver on the goals set out in the uh, sustainable development goals in the 2030 agenda. 2030 is not that far away now. Uh, and those targets are really uh, important to achieve to lay the foundations for the future. And that was a 15 year agenda. Now, you know, electoral cycles, uh, you know, can sort of take your eye away from those longer term things. But I think when a government does something that works and delivers for its people, 
then all political parties can support it. I mean, in the United Kingdom, we established a national education system, we established a welfare state, we established... All of those things have become embedded, and most political parties are now debating on not whether we have them or we don't have them, but how we improve upon them. And that's the sort of debate that I'm sure Ghana will have for the future. That's Lord Collins, a UK minister in charge of Africa there earlier today when I sat with him, a number of issues coming up. And then also the, the recommendations he makes about what has to be done to safeguard the democracy that we're, we're experiencing or practicing as a country going into this election. This is your election command center.